Hello and welcome to another video tutorial from Transformer Tech Inc. Today we're going to be showcasing some of the new features inside IBM Integration Bus version 9. So let's take a look at our agenda for this video. First we're going to go over some of the new features in IIB version 9, some of the key features that we found. Um, then we're going to go over our original version 8 XML COBOL message flow. There's a link to it on the screen right now, so if you want to go back and take a look at how we created the flow, be sure to do that. Then we're going to enhance our existing version 8 flow utilizing some of the new version 9 features. We're going to implement an MQ server service and we're going to implement a database service. Then we're going to test our new XML to COBOL message flow. Some of the new features in IIB version 9, um, we have the decision service which enables you to create business rules that are executed in an integration server. This can help with your, your business with automation tasks. We have database mapping which allows you to query a database, uh, get information back and with SQL statements and bring it right into a mapping node. We have an MQ service which is going to help speed up the process of development by allowing you to discover all of your queues. This way you can select your input and output queues and set them all quickly and efficiently. Then we have a database service which allows you to completely configure a connection to a database, not only setting connection info but also creating SQL statements for ease of use later in development. And we'll have an an example of an MQ service and a database service. Now there are many more new features in IAB version 9 so be sure to check out the info center for those. Alright let's hop into our demo. Alright we already have our toolkit open and we already have our message flow from version 8 migrated. We've made no changes here. Um, to migrate from version 8 to version 9 you don't need to make any changes so we're good to go here. So, so just to give a brief overview of what we had in our flow before we have an input node goes to a mapping that maps from XML to COBOL and we have a file output node. Now we're going to be changing this to uh, also go out to a queue so it's going to query the database and uh, either go out to the file or the queue based on what's inside the database. So let's get started with that. First thing we're going to do is create a new library. And we'll just call this XML to COBOL lib or library. And we'll hit finish here. It's going to create that for us. Then we're going to start by creating a new uh, MQ service. And we'll hit finish here so we can start going to the wizard start creating it. This makes it really easy to uh, choose queues for inputs and outputs. So all we have to do is give it the queue manager name. Hit next here. It's going to go out, pull in all those queues, and all we have to do is select the ones that we want for our input and the one we want for our output. It's going to configure them all for us. Makes it really simple, really easy. So we're going to leave these MQ headers, uh, message headers, as default because we're not really using them. But if you were, if you had to change them, then this would be where you do that. And here we're going to set our operations. Now we're not using any external services or uh, we don't have any special data types. So we're just going to set these as default. To string. So we'll hit next and we'll see our summary and we'll save it and we're good to go there. So we'll hop back to our flow and we'll apply this MQ service. It's really easy. All you have to do is drag it, drop it onto your message flow, choose the implement option, and there you have it. We're all set up, ready to go already. So we have our MQ input, we have our output, and it gave us our MQ header as well. So taking a look at this really quickly, we see we have our queue manager name, our queue name, and the input, we have the same thing. So before we move on, we're just going to set up the input message parsing. Uh, so it matches our original flow, set the MRM here, choose our XML input message set that we created in our previous um, video. So we have the sample input message and the physical format is XML. So we'll just give that a quick save and we'll go ahead and create the database service. So we'll just go right click our library, go to new, go to database service, and we'll hit finish here and it's going to bring us to the wizard and we can start creating it. So we're going next here, we're going to create a new data, data, database definition file. Now right now this only works with DB2 databases. So we'll hit OK here. We're going to choose a data design project. We don't have one, so we're going to create one. and We'll just call it DB design for this. And we'll hit finish here. And once that's created, we're going to hit the next button. We're going to create a new connection to our database. So basically this is just going to be um, copying the what's in the ODBC connector. So we have TTDB. We're going to use our DB2 admin here. hit finish. Alright, so we see that was created. We have all the information here. We'll go next. So this is going to go out and we're going to give it the schema that we created our table with. And this is going to go out and grab all the tables underneath that schema file and we can begin working with it. Make it really easy for us to visualize what's on the database table. And then it's going to go ahead and generate some SQL code for us so we don't even have to do any of that. So we'll take a look at that. We'll go next here. We're going to click on our table. We're going to see all the columns. And just right now, we can see that we have columns here, but I want to show you what the table actually looks like. So we have the TT demo employee underneath that DB2 schema. So we have um, first names, last names of some employees, 
all their information. Then we also have a destination column, which is going to be what we're um, selecting on so we can see where their, their message should go. So if they have a file, it'll go out to the file output. And if they have a queue, we'll send it out to the queue. Right, so we'll continue on. We see we have all the columns there. We'll go next so we can start building our SQL statement. We're going to add an operation. We want to add a select so we can select that destination. So all we have to do now is to select the destination as our output column and we'll give it some conditions because we want to give us the where clause so we can choose based on first name and last name. So we'll go first name. We'll hit the add here because we're going to be adding a first name and last name. And we'll choose last name and we're all set. So we'll hit next. Um, and we'll leave all these default, everything's good here, next one more time and we'll save the database service. Alright, so now that we have our database service to apply it, we make it really easy. All we need is a compute node, so we're going to drag compute node onto our message flow. Once we have the compute node, really easy to apply the database service, just drag the database service onto the compute node and we're going to drop it and hit finish. So this is going to bring us to the code that it generates for us. So we can see that it created a SQL statement um, automatically, generated for us. So if we're not so good with SQL or we're not sure about what the commands are, it's going to get created for us and it makes it really simple, really easy to use, uh, really, and also really quickly, which is really good for development. All right, so we'll take a look at the SQL here, that's going to, uh, the ESQL that's going to um, work with the SQL statement, work with that method. So we'll go into here. Now we already have it copied, so we're just going to um, paste it on here and we'll go over it really quickly. So we declared some variables here for first name, last name for the uh, result set. We've set our first name and our last name to what's coming out of the mapping node. So we have the input root, MRM, name, first name. It's going to be out, coming out of the mapping node uh, in that format so we can pull it into our ES ESQL here. Then we're going to send it off to that generated um, method for us. It's going to return back the destination from the database. So we have the row reference here that references to the results. Now we have some logic here that if the um, return destination is file, it's going to propagate to the out terminal. And if it's anything other than file, it's going to go to out one, which we're going to connect up to the queue. All right, so we'll give that a save and we'll go back to the message flow. And since we're all set, we've applied our MQ service and we've applied our database service, we can just wire this up, deploy it, and give it a test. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just wire ins to outs here, really easy. And then on the compute node, if you remember, the out is gonna to go to the file and the out one is gonna to go to the queue. All right, so we'll give that a save and we're ready to deploy this. So we'll just choose our message flow and deploy it out to our execution group. All right, while that's deploying, we're just going to give you a quick overview of what it looks, what our inputs look like. So we have two different input files here. We have one with um, my name, and um, that's going to query the database based on my first name and last name. And as you can see back on the table, uh, I should be going to a file. Then we have another person, Tim Smith here. Um, he has some other information, and on the table, he should be going to a queue. So we will test that right now. We'll go to our RFH util. We're going to open our input file for me, so we should be going out to a file. We're going to write to our input queue, right, so it's going to go through the message flow and should be out in the file. And we can see that it is in a fixed length format uh, with all my information that came in from the XML input. All right, so we saw that example. So now we're going to do another one with uh, the other file that we had for Tim Smith. He should be going out to a queue, so we're just going to write um, to this queue to the input queue, it's going to run through, and we should see it on the output queue, so we'll take a look at that. So we'll just start browsing this, and we should see that we have the same information, um, but now it's on, on the queue, because it's been routed based on what the destination said inside uh, the database, based on its first name and last name, we can see we have fixed length format with all the information. So we see that everything worked really well, uh, we, had every, we had our message go to the file or go to the queue, so we're all set there. Thank you for watching this video from Transformer Tech Inc. on some of the new features inside IBM Integration Bus version 9. Be sure to check out our website at www.transformatech.com. You can always email us for more information at info at transformatech.com. And be sure to check out our other videos on YouTube for some WebStream Message Broker tutorials, as well as information about our WebStream Message Broker and MQ monitoring product. Thank you.